Hi everyone, my name is Jacques-Christophe Schwinner. In this beginner Python tutorial, we will learn how to get started with Python. So I will assume that you have installed Python properly and that you've watched the previous tutorial. And I will uh, learn the first basic things that you should know with Python. Let's get going. I, I now have moved to my terminal window and we will look if Python has been installed by looking at Python 3 version. If Python 3 has probably been installed, you'll see here the version of what you've had. If you want to know where it's been installed, you can search for which Python 3, and then you'll have exactly the location on your computer where the Python 3 executable file has been installed. In order to start using Python on terminal, use the Python 3 keyword. And what this will do is that it will open the Python interpreter. From the Python interpreter, you can do things like print hello world and then press enter and execute that. In order to get out of the, the Python interpreter, you use control plus D and you're getting out now. In case the Python tree command didn't work one thing you can do is look at python version instead because maybe you have installed the python tree so if you haven't installed python tree maybe you will have the command there the other possibility is that your path was not installed because the way the python executable file works is by asking for the file within your terminal the reason why I can ask it only by stating Python 3 is because I've added the path to my Python. So it doing Python 3 like this is exactly uh, the same as do using the exact Python file and, and execute it here. So using Python in terminal is not necessarily the most easy thing to do. So I will use to an IDE in order to use Python. So in my case, I will open VS Code. So here, instead of the terminal, I'll keep doing the tutorial, but using the VS Code uh, IDE, which makes it easier easier to run Python, such as in this case, where I just put my code here and I run the code here. So if you haven't installed Python and you had issue, just look at these two tutorial and we'll get going with the the rest of the beginner introduction to Python. So the next thing that we can do is actually importing code from another library. So one of the powerful thing Python can do or whatever other programming languages can do is to be able to leverage the code that other people have written into your own code. In Python, the way to import this code is to use the import keyword and import the library that you want to import. In this case, I will import this. And what this is, this is simply the Zen of Python. So this code does nothing apart from stating how Python code should look like. So when you program, you will most likely use comments uh, at least you should, and the reason for this is that it will help you and any other uh, any other people understand what you were trying to do with your code. So comments are super important, and one way you can write a comment is by r using the hashtag comment. You can also add the comment at the end of the line saying, this is a comment. And then you can run this and none of the comments will be shown when you execute the, the line. This is different than using a string because if you execute a string, it will, sh it will display on the page with the quotation signal. So comments is with the hashtag and doc string is using the strings. So you can use, create a multi-line doc string by using the triple quotes instead. And what will happen here is if you return this, it will return the doc string. However, if you print this, 
it will not show the quotation. So as you can see here, it has no multiple. If you print it, then your doc string will be shown this way. So you can either use single quotes or double quotes when, whenever doing these multi-line comments. One thing that is very important with Python is the indentation. So the Zen of Python tells us that beautiful is better than ugly. And this really is true with Python. So the creators wanted to force programmers to write beautiful code, so they forced indentation. So while in some programming languages you could do things like this, that it simply looks ugly, like you don't know where the strings start, you don't know where the loops start, everything is all over the place, this can be okay for other programming language. In Python, it doesn't work. It would throw an error. So while these errors may be uh, difficult to handle at start, so for example, if I, would, I were to say i equals zero and I were to print i, this would return an error saying indentation error, forcing you to put an indentation here. So if I run this, this would work properly. You can also use spaces instead of tabs. By default, what the tab will do is that it will create four spaces here. And I would strongly urge you to use uh, to use tabs because it's easier to, to have code that is properly implemented when you use tabs. And for instance, if I were to use a space, and I want to then use tab, then I, I'm not exactly on the same spot, right? Because here I was using space, so I didn't know. But when you always use tabs, then you are certain that all your lines are properly aligned. So indentation is super important in Python. And you want, whenever you have a block that ends up with a column, you need to have the proper indentation next to it. So next, what we want to do is we need to do, we want to define variables. So I have an entire tutorial on Python variables, uh, but essentially what a variable is, it allows you to store data. So you can have var and equal one. So for example, if I return var, this will return the variable value. So if you've done algebra before, you can understand that kind of logic of x equal one and return x. But in Python, you can also put strings instead of using a numbered variable. So variables are super important to understand. The other part that I want to discuss is casing. How do you name those variables? And Python has some standards that you can follow in order to make your code more readable and understandable for others when they look at it. So those standards are for variables, function, and module, you want to use snake case. For classes, you want to use Pascal case. And for constants, you want to use capital snake case. So for example, this is snake case. It's all lowercase. And you just say my variable. If you're creating a class, uh, then uh, this will learn more in object oriented programming. But a class is generated using the class keyword. You want to use Pascal case, so my first class. So it's first letters of each word are uppercase and it. So this is called Pascal case. This is what you want to do in, as a standard in order to, to define your classes. If you have a constant, you want to use all capitalized, my const. So I have a constant. This is something that I define at the beginning of my code and I never change. So in this case, it's capitalized snake case. So these are the standard. You will very often see camel case. And camel case, where you see it so often in, in code is because this is the standard standard used in JavaScript. 
So without diving too much into what you can do in Python, I just want to show you some of the, the syntax that you can use. So you want to do a if block. So, so if something happened, do something. So the way you do that in Python is by saying if condition, you want to say do something. Then you can say else l if condition, do something else. And you can say else if all conditions are not met, do something else. So the condition that you can say is if i is greater than zero, you could say do something. If i is less than 10, do something else. And then if none of the conditions are met, do something else. The other super important concept is, is the for loop. So I take a variable that is a list of one, two, three, and I want to do a loop. I use a for keyword and I say for i in var and I say print i. So I'm looping through each value here in order to print it. As you can see here, what I've done is I've done the similar thing. I've made sure that I have indentation between each block. So the, either it's a loop or function or a uh, if else, I'm always having the same kind of indentation for that block. This brings me to the next statement, which is how to build a function. So in order to create a function, and again, I'm not going too deep into that subject, but to define a function, we use a def keyword. And then we say my func, and I'm still using a uh, snake case here. And then here I use the column. So whenever I create a block, I ended up with the column here. And whenever I have that column, I need to have that indentation first. And I could say print hello. And in order to call my function, I would say my func. And I will return this. And I would have that hello returned to me. So sometimes your code becomes very burdensome. For example, uh, let me try to say, um, a big if statement. So I have i equal 10. And what I want to do is I want to say if i, if is instance i uh, integer. So I want to check if i is an integer and i is greater than zero and i is less than 50. 50. Then I can say, uh print this is a long statement so this is okay look it can be very long but what if i started doing four i in range 100 then i need to do this and then if i define that as a my func Then I need to, again, add that new indentation. Uh, so this can become very long, right? So if I, wanna, if I wanna come back to where I was before and I wanna make that more readable, what I can do is I can use the backslash and I can uh, add this to a new line. So here, if I wanna run this, I will see that this works as well. So you can always use that backslash in order to create new line in your code so that if you ever zoom in very big, uh, your code still fits into one line. So the next thing I wanna discuss before I let you go with this introduction is Python errors. So one thing that you will absolutely face in your programming life is facing an error. So for example, if I want to say 10 divided by zero, I cannot divide by zero. It's a mathematical concept that you cannot do that. You will have a zero division error. If you want to do this within a function, so def divide by zero, so if I put that into a function and I say print, forcing an error, and I return that function, 
I want to I want to show what will happen. I still have that division error, but what is interesting here is it will provide you the trace back of what's going on. So when the code ran, it will see that when you try to run that method divided by zero, it had an error. And from that error, it shows you exactly where this happened. So I had that method error, and it shows that the line where it's breaking, it's here, because I cannot divide by zero. So it's super important to understand this because you will face a lot of error. One of the biggest errors that you'll see is also like if I try to import a, a, a module that doesn't ex, ex, exist, you'll find module not found error. You'll see uh, the indentation error very often, the one that we've discussed earlier. So make sure that you don't are not scared with these error, but that you get used of reading it and understanding your code. And what will happen is sometime the module that you're importing has an error and then it becomes a bit more complex. So this is it. Uh, it was a short introduction. We're ready to move to the next steps and dive a bit deeper into Python. So help me by subscribing to this channel and stay tuned for my upcoming uh, Python SEO course, which I've linked in the comment. And you can also learn a lot more about what I do on social media and my own website. So thank you very much and see you next time.